Ladies and gentlemen, along with the rumours that Sony will be releasing the PlayStation 5 Pro later next year, which of course is going to be the PS5 again, albeit with just up more upgraded hardware, there are also some whispers online that Microsoft's strategy for the next generation consoles will differ significantly from Sony's, with the rumours alleging that the next generation Xbox consoles will actually launch in 2026, which could be one to two years prior to the release of the PlayStation. 6. So I've been actually hearing quite a lot of rumors regarding this and I want to talk to you guys about them because I'm getting a lot of questions actually online as well as from my friends. Why would Microsoft go so much earlier than Sony? What is the difference in the two companies strategies going forward? Now, of course, Phil Spencer himself has essentially stated that the Xbox Series X hardware will be the pro console for this generation. I have already leaked Xbox Sabin, which is basically upgraded Xbox Series S hardware. The only difference is basically additional RAM, improvements in the GPU, but also I also heard there was something to do with a machine learning block for upsampling and stuff like that. But ultimately speaking, it's canned and it was canned very early on to my understanding. Basically, it was something that the engineers were kind of working on as kind of like a, a proof of concept, I suppose, but it never got buy-in from Microsoft's head honchos as well as Xbox's head honchos. So again, the project is canned. So in this video, I wanna to talk to you guys a lot about the difference in Sony and Microsoft strategy, why Microsoft will be going first. And this is gonna be setting up a future video which is gonna be coming out in the next couple of days, discussing also why there's gonna be a PlayStation 5 Pro and also some very interesting stuff for machine learning and other stuff, which is probably gonna be yet another video. Well, let's just get into this, shall we? Now, of course, it is worth noting that these ultimately are rumours. But with that said, the rumour train for the next generation Xbox are now, well, it's way left the station. So initially, I was hearing a number of rumours um, from developers as well as some other people that Microsoft's strategy had shifted significantly versus the FTC filings that basically hinted that the machine, the next generation Xbox, would be launched in 2027, 2028. We'll get more into those slides in a moment, but this has now been backed up by some other people. Um, in fact, I think maybe Kepler L2 was also saying this around the same time as myself. I honestly don't remember the timelines there, but he also has a really good track record. But recently, a number of you guys, and I missed this totally, so full credit to everyone on Twitter who did spot this initially, um, Jeff Grubb has also been saying that, according to his sources, um, yeah, it seems Microsoft will be going first. And again, the launch date for this next generation hardware is going to be somewhere around 2026. Now, again, I want to stress that this is a full new next generation hardware console that will launch. With the PS5 Pro, it's like the PS4 Pro or the Xbox One X. Yeah, of course, you get better visuals, etc., etc., but ultimately, the same, the same core underlying principles of the hardware are the same. For example, if we look at the PS4 to the PS4 Pro, it has faster memory, it's got faster CPU, it's got faster GPU, but it doesn't have the SSD that we have become accustomed to in this generation. It doesn't have the ridiculously fast Zen 2 based CPU, well, ridiculously fast versus the Jaguars that were in the previous generation doesn't have ray tracing, etc., etc., And that's what Microsoft wants to do with the next generation of hardware. It wants to basically set up the next generation of gaming and not move to a pro. And however, there are some very interesting reasons that Microsoft are doing this. Now, if we pick on the FTC filings for a moment, specifically some documents that Microsoft kind of well, they kind of leaked by accident non-redacted documents of their plans for not only this generation of hardware, but also the next generation. Looking for a moment at this generation, they did mention what seems to be cost-reduced variants of the Xbox Series S and X. Ultimately, the specifications, at least according to these filings anyway, were the same. So there's no improvements, for example, in the graphics processor. But it seemed to be, well, smaller probably using a 6NM chip, at least according to the information here. And there were also some improvements in connectivity, wireless, for example, communication. So ultimately it was very much the same console over again, um, but costing less, 
lower power consumption, etc., etc. Now, I honestly do not know whether those consoles are still going to launch or not. Spencer has said that the plans have changed significantly, which seems to impact not only this mid-generation refresh, but also consoles going forward, the next generation Xbox plans, which of course are going to be the focus primarily of this video. I wouldn't be surprised if Microsoft did release a cost-reduced version in the future. Honestly, I've heard absolutely nothing solid, just a whole bunch of conflicting information on that front, so I'm not going to lie and tell you guys I've heard one thing or another. I honestly don't know. Logically, they will, but I honestly do not know. But let's move on to the next generation, specifically on the filings from Microsoft, these images that I've alluded to a couple of times already at this point. Now, I'm not going to do a super in-depth technical analysis to these slides because one, I've already done it, and two, it's not the primary focus of this video. I will, however, just go over them very briefly. So in these slides, they mention specifically Zen 6 and RDNA 5. However, there are some other pieces of uh, wording here, which is quite interesting, and we'll go through them sporadically throughout the video. Now, note Zen 6. Now, Zen 5 for the desktop, which will be part of, let's say, Granite Ridge, that will, or should I say the PC market with the um, AM5 implementation for the desktop being Granite Ridge, that will launch next year. Now, Zen 5, of course, will eventually be followed with Zen 6, probably a couple of years later. RDNA 5 is an interesting one, um, probably going to launch at the end of 2025-ish. And roughly speaking, it, about two years later, will probably be followed with RDNA 6. Now, if you've been following the story of RDNA 4's high-end GPUs, you also know that there may be some interesting stuff with the architecture anyway, um, simply because stuff hasn't exactly always been hitting the timelines that uh, AMD have wanted. With that said, of course, a console is quite different because it often uses custom um, IPs. Microsoft specifically states that they're going to customize the IPs here. And there's also a whole bunch of other buzzwords at the kind of bottom part of this uh, document like next generation DXR, they're talking about machine learning and upsampling, all of this other stuff. And this is really, really important going forward for the next generation of hardware, at least in my personal opinion. But again, the specifications myself, Kepler, as well as others seem to be reporting now, seem to not to be based on Zen 6, instead Zen 5. This is probably because the console is being pushed to an earlier time frame. So basically Zen 6 simply would not be ready in time. So, okay, I've spoken a lot of crap at this point trying to set all of this up. Why the hell are Microsoft going to go earlier? It doesn't take a particular genius to say, well, if you go sooner, let's say two years on the outside or one year, you're not going to have such an advanced console. This is very typical. We've seen it for, with the PlayStation 2 versus, let's say, the GameCube or et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's, it's a tale as old as the time. Like, even if you go back to, like, the NES versus the Master System or the Genesis, which went first, versus the SNES, the SNES had a much wider co uh, color palette. It had Mode 7 for background rotation and all this other crap that the Genesis just couldn't do in hardware. And, yeah, you could do some other jiggery pokery on the um, uh, Genesis hardware and use like shadow mode, you know, as well outside the topic of this video. The point is though that the hardware just wasn't advanced because of course that's just how technology works. Well, speaking to multiple people at this point and just kind of getting a lay of the land, I think it really comes down to a couple of different factors. The first is Microsoft really want to focus on the messaging, specifically setting the messaging going into the next generation. Now, if we look back at the Xbox 360, which is arguably about the most successful Xbox generation from Microsoft, they went first. And while there were some issues with the hardware in terms of reliability, like the Red Ring of Death, generally speaking, the 360 was pretty damn good. It was relatively easy to develop for. It was decently powerful. Yeah, the PS3's cell processor was arguably more powerful, but the GPU, it was, you know, the two architectures were quite different from one another. But Microsoft basically had 
a very interesting next generation experience out of the box and of course they were ahead of sony with the playstation 3 of course launching much later and also more expensive and that is another thing as well i'm hearing that the playstation 6 and it's very early to be 100 percent concerned about this yet but i've heard that the ps6 is probably going to be a more expensive box microsoft probably want a strategy more in line with the xbox 360. Also, reading between the lines from developers, some of it seems to be the Xbox Series S. Um, and we've all heard about the developmental issues with the Series S. Now, at this stage, I don't 100% know if Microsoft will launch a cheaper SKU, because ultimately it is somewhat of a double-edged sword. If the console can be cheap enough, you do end up selling more consoles, potentially to users, he says as he hits the mic. But it also means that you are reducing the specification for the lower end console, which can make things quite difficult. My guess, and again, I'm basing this purely on the early information that I'm hearing, and also the, again, going back to the FTC filing, Microsoft specifically mentioned what seems to be some type of light console, probably some type of streaming device. If you cast your minds back to the early days of the rumors of these series consoles, as well as when these series consoles were initially revealed, I think it was, um, I think it was Jez Gordon as well that rumoured this quite heavily. And also, I think Spencer himself has now confirmed that this was the case, that there was going to be a streaming Xbox Series console, which basically was just OS only, essentially. It would be streaming from xCloud. But they couldn't release the device because it wasn't at a cheap enough price. However, of course, technology moves on quite fast. My guess for this generation is there's going to be like a, you know, it's going to be kind of like Sony with one console SKU or like the Xbox One when it launched. But the lower end consoles will basically be taken care of with like xCloud, which I think kind of makes sense from Microsoft's perspective. And it really does allow them in the future to have an upgraded piece of hardware. And Phil Spencer himself has mentioned this. Like I think it was a 20, I think it was a 2016 interview. He was talking about how you can imagine people will upgrade their consoles a little bit like smartphones. Now, of course, ultimately, the fixed nature of hardware for consoles does make developer development, excuse me, a little bit easier. So you can't just like, it's not as easy as let's say with an iPhone or like a, a Samsung Galaxy to have these like arbitrary like limitations, but I can definitely imagine how Microsoft will want to possibly release like a pro console and this is not a leak, this is just me pulling it out of my ass, but like 2029 or something like that. So it's more powerful than the PlayStation 6, but it's built around, of course, the next generation te console technology that Microsoft have already established with the um, next generation Xbox. Now, of course, if we look back at the PlayStation 5 versus the PS5 Pro rumored specifications that I have been putting out for a while now, and now others are also whispering about as well, Ultimately, this is a console, as I said initially, that's very much like the PS4 to the PS4 Pro. It's an incremental upgrade, whereas of course, a new generation of consoles is gonna have significantly more power. Now, I think a very obvious thing is to say, well, yeah, it's gonna have more CPU performance than 5 class. It's gonna have more GPU performance, RDNA 5, with you know a bunch more T-flops and all that other crap which goes into that, but fundamentally, GPUs are not just a collection of the amount of T-flops. There is so much more to a console that is going to be part and parcel of the next generation. Upscaling technologies are going to become extremely important. Microsoft, NVIDIA, all of these companies are doing a lot of work in denoising, which is basically for hardware-based ray tracing and path tracing. I'm not going to go super in depth into this explanation because it's well outside of the technical drill down, but I would highly advise you guys to check it out from NVIDIA with like DLSS 3.5 and how, um, how denoising works. NVIDIA have a lot of white papers and tech about this, but basically speaking, when you're doing ray tracing in a scene, from the perspective of the camera, rays are shot into the scene. And then what those uh, rays interact with in the scene is basically calculated. So for example, if a surface bounces a ray to another surface, if the ray goes off into like the, you know, just into space, for example, if it's um, hitting a surface where it doesn't just reflect, it reflects. 
um, because obviously a ray, for example, hitting the surface of water will, di will be uh, different from a ray that hits, I don't know, like a, a sheet of glass. All of this stuff is, you know, very computationally expensive. So the more rays you can shoot into a scene, you basically get just better visual clarity. Unfortunately, the more rays you shoot into a scene, it's also, well, computationally very expensive. So you use technology like denoising, which basically is kind of a fill in the blanks. The next generation, though, and again, we've seen this a lot from NVIDIA, as well as others seem to be uh, messing around with this, like Sony as well. Um, it basically utilizes stuff like machine learning to essentially fill in the blanks by basically using AI to figure out what actually would happen based upon the data and the scene. And that's very important because it means that you get better performance. And image reconstruction, of course, is something that we've seen quite extensively recently. Like FSR, you know, has been... Uh, moved to consoles very well. Uh, Nvidia, uh, sorry, Unreal have their own version of this, and this is just an example of going forward. However, I think that um, the next generation is also going to bring big advancements into NPCs, artificial intelligence, for example, on how characters can interact with you. I'm going to be doing a much deeper dive into this in a future video because there's a lot of stuff already with Microsoft partnering with a ton of different companies, uh, NVIDIA as well. All of these companies are kind of looking at this. But if you use something like ChatGPT, you can kind of get a rough idea of how this works, but it's basically using natural language. So for example, let's just hypothetically say that Gear 7, just for example, launches on the next generation Xbox. And let's say um, that you're playing as Kate, and let's just say Marcus is trying to, you know, is, is like by your side and you're like, Marcus, cover me. And you won't have to like press a button prompt or like reloading and Marcus, as well as the rest of the team, will lay down suppressing fire because, well, they can understand the basics of, oh, he needs cover or she needs cover or whatever. So these are really important things, I think. I'm gonna move on to the next generation. Again, Microsoft hints this specifically in the slides and I kind of think that this is quite logical given all of the research at this point. Now, I could be wrong on this. I'm happy to be wrong, but it seems like this is a very logical thing going forward based upon all of the slides, all the different things. Microsoft recently have uh, been working with direct, um, on direct ML, which is direct machine learning. It's like direct X, but well, for machine learning. And that is now to work on NPUs. Now I'm not 100% certain whether they will use an NPU. Um, the slides from Microsoft seem to indicate that that is the case. But again, it's very possible that it could all be done on the GPU itself. Um, because in the slide, it also mentions that they are kind of balancing on fixed function versus flexible function, you know, stuff. In other words, the more space you dedicate on an APU um, for something which only has one function, you kind of reduce the amount of size that could be used on like a GPU, which is for general purpose stuff. And they could do something like, you know, different integer or different floating point precision crap on the GPU. So it's going to be very interesting to see how that goes forward. I'm not super aware at the moment what RDNA 5 has. Um, whether, you know, what um, machine learning extensions it has off the top of my head. But again, it's custom. So we don't 100% know what Microsoft will be working on internally with this stuff. It's going to be extremely interesting, though, to see what they do um, do. Now, remember, guys, and this brings me to the next question that I've been getting. Won't it be a bit early? Um, and won't it risk leaving Xbox Series owners out in the cold? Well, here's the thing. Console generations are very... They go on different amounts of time. Like the Xbox original console, which was amazing, by the way, it was like... I can't remember how many years, but it wasn't it wasn't that long until the 360 came out. I think it was like four or five years. Someone correct me in the comments. I genuinely don't remember. I know I got the uh, Crystal Console. I can't remember what games I got with it, but you know that was how I experienced Halo 2. And if you look at the time frame between, let's say, the PS1 and PS2, it was a lot different between 
the PS3 and PS4, which was an absolutely ridiculously long generation of consoles. Basically, this stuff can be very flexible depending on a plethora of conditions which is going on in the market, such as, well, the technology, such as what's going on in terms of people's buying ability and people, you know, actually wanting to spend money. Um, and so there is all of the, there are so many different um, criteria. Now, will it leave Xbox Series owners out in the cold? I think not in a couple of ways. The first is that as always with this stuff, like the PS4 to the PS5 or Xbox One to Xbox Series, et cetera, et cetera, there is a cross-generational period. So yeah, of course, some developers are gonna be like, yeah, okay, I just wanna make a game for the next generation. But a lot of folks won't want to do that, and there are going to be a ton of games, of course, which are going to work across both generations of hardware. But even if they decide, you know what, I want this game, again, I'm just going to get, say Gears 7 for the sake of discussion here. I don't know what the time frame is, it's probably going to be you know, not Gears 7, but it just makes an example. Even if that is exclusive to the next generation Xbox, and again, that is not a leak, I really want to stress, I am just making that up. If it was a, you know, a game that would only be on that console, Microsoft can do something like uh, xCloud and just stream it to your Xbox Series S and that would be perfectly doable. And of course they can just basically put you know, the next generation Xboxes in the server blaze, etc., etc., like we saw with the previous generation. So I think there is a lot of room there and I think it's gonna be very interesting. In some ways, I think the next generation of consoles is probably gonna be actually a bigger jump than this one with this generation of consoles, um, I'm not going to say it was like not interesting because that would be just totally untrue and a load of crap from me. However, it was a bunch of upgrades that were required. The mechanical drives from the previous generation, you know, the Xbox One, the PS4, they were really slow. There was a shit ton of latency trying to grab data. And I don't just mean the actual read speeds, but if there was like data here and data there on the disc, it was like eh, trying to get the data. It was a whole thing. And that's one of the reasons as well that you had a lot of repeated data across the disk. So for example, if you had um, textures that were in different parts, that were in different levels, oftentimes those level, uh, that, that data would be repeated multiple times across the disk, which of course ballooned install sizes. Now of course install sizes are just getting bigger because texture sizes and all that other crap are getting larger anyway. But that's a slightly different topic. Um, the CPUs, of course, as we all know, were really slow with the um, PS4 and Xbox One, they just were the best they could do because they were based around AMD's Jaguar technology. Um, Zen just was not even a thing at that point. So if they wanted to go with an x86 design, um, which obviously they did, the only real choice if they were going with AMD were, um, well, <laughs> I guess they could have gone with Bulldozer. Um, but yeah, that just wouldn't have gone well. So ultimately, of course, they had to go with a low power CPU because, well, of course they did, and also the footprint on the die itself. So yeah, basically a load of crap I'm saying, but ultimately what does matter is the fact that that generation, this generation, should I say, bought a lot of upgrades that were required. The next generation, I think, is going to be a lot more interesting because now we actually have a lot of, um, how do I say this? A lot, of the, a lot of the tool chains, a lot of the experience from developers, and now it's like, how can we make this better? Like the basics are in, but if you look at the GPUs in these consoles, RDNA 2 is not exactly the best for ray tracing. This is the same for um, PC hardware as well. Um, so of course, the next generation, they can do a lot more. You know, there's it's a lot of extra stuff that they can do. So it's gonna be fascinating. With that said, guys, I think I've rambled enough. Uh, this video turned out to be a lot ramblier, <laughs> I hope, but um, anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you don't watch another video from me before the Christmas period, um, I hope you have an amazing one. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, bye for now.